Hello. <laughs> Hi. I am on my way to La Crosse, Wisconsin to visit the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe. I am so excited. Come along with me today as I journey to La Crosse, Wisconsin. As we're on our way, I'm also going to share more about the story of Guadalupe and why she's so important that Pope Pius XII referred to her as the Empress of the Americas. What does this have to do with going to the Lady Guadalupe? Well, I'm getting pumped. Juan Diego first encountered Our Lady on Tepehek Hill outside of Mexico City. She was absolutely radiant and glowing with the sun. Juan asked, what can I do for you? And the lady said, have a church be built here in my honor. Juan went to the bishop, but it wasn't met with initial success. And there was some more back and forth between Juan, Our Lady, and Bishop Smaraga, and then eventually the bishop asked for a sign. Juan went to Our Lady. She had instructed that he go to the top of the hill and pick some flowers, and there he found Castilian roses, flowers that were out of season and also not native to Mexico, but a flower that Bishop Smaraga would have known from Spain. Juan Diego picks the flowers. Our Lady arranges them in his toma, and he goes to the bishop. And then when Juan was in the bishop's presence, the flowers fell out of his toma, and there left behind was the image Guadalupe. And that amazed the bishop and Juan, and the church was built in her honor on Tepehek Hill. I thought that I would stop at the Sisters of St. Francis uh, of C.C. Heights in Rochester, Minnesota, on my way to La Crosse, but it turns out that they are closed to the public at this moment so I'm not going to stop in but they have very beautiful grounds here. Shout out to St. Francis and the Franciscans as they also play a very significant role in this story. St. Francis is well known for his love of creation and animals, for preaching to the birds and once to a wolf. He had started the Franciscan order to more closely imitate the life of Jesus Christ. The Franciscans would renounce their possessions and fully embrace the vow of poverty in an effort to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in the communities that they served. Bishop Zumrago was a Franciscan. He would have dedicated himself wholeheartedly to the mission of the gospel and to serving the indigenous people. Lesser known facts about the bishop is that one, he introduced Spain to drinking chocolate. He had mixed cane sugar with cocoa and that became a huge rage and also he started the first printing press in the americas that is not a coincidence i made it just in time for mass except i don't know if mass is up there or in here but made it for mass there's a lot to be desired <laughs> Juan Diego is the first person native to the Americas to be sainted by the Catholic Church. His story, this task, wasn't easy for him. He went back to Our Lady and was like, I don't think I'm the right person for this task. Our Lady said to him, 
Listen and understand. Do not let anything afflict or trouble your heart. Am I not here? I, who am your mother? What a great visit. Beautiful. I I told the man, came here right up to Mass, that I'll be back. He told me that it's beautiful when the flowers come out in the summer, spring. I'll be back. Certainly. Gunson was so nice. I'll be back. I'll be back again. Soar! Soar on wings of eagles! There's a bald eagle. Right there. Alright. Well, eagles on the Wisconsin side of the river, and I am going back to Minnesota. Oftentimes, when I've heard the story of Guadalupe, I've heard Bishop Zumarraga portrayed in a not-so-good light. It's kind of fair because he wasn't receptive to Juan's request right off the bat. And I'm sure Juan's story, when he first heard it, probably sounded too good to be true. Juan was probably full of emotion when he told it to because that would be quite the encounter and I'm sure it would have quite the impact on one's emotions and it would be told probably <laughs> I'm sure it probably would have been a very entertaining story. And the bishop, I'm sure, was also a steward of his resources. And a church was a significant financial undertaking. It's probably a good thing that he took some time to discern that question. I think both Juan and the bishop were truly working within God's will in this story. The bishop, he was being mindful of his resources and taking time to discern what God really is wanting in the story. And Juan, he was so brave and despite everything he still went to the bishop and he still persevered throughout this to make sure that this request from the mother of God was heard and was seen through. Had the bishop in that first encounter been like, yes, let's go build that church right now, none of this would have happened. Like Juan wouldn't have had to go back to Our Lady, none of the other things would have happened in this story and Juan wouldn't have gone back to the bishop with the roses in his toma and the image wouldn't have been printed. And in that image, there are meanings to both the Spanish and the indigenous peoples. And I think that's just so incredible. And it's incredible because God knows people, right? God does not have a, God, there's not a superior culture, right? It's, we're all part of God's family and God knows his children very well. Mary knows them too. Lots of indigenous people would go to that spot because they saw in that image a part of their culture and then a part of their identity that was very important to them. I know I didn't dive into the meanings in that image into the, in this video because there's just so much. There were meanings for the indigenous and for the Spanish and there's so many meanings today as well for us and I think that's the beautiful thing about art and the beautiful thing about heavenly art. All this to say, how cool is it that in Minnesota so in Wisconsin that there is also a shrine in her honor because Guadalupe, while she did make her operations in Mexico City, I think she is indeed the 
Empress of the Americas because her impact has been much farther than just Mexico City. It's been on all of the Americas. God loves the Americas because of our stories, because of our diversity, and because we are such a beautiful people. And I think that's so cool. And I think Guadalupe is indeed worthy of the title of the Empress of the Americas. Hail Mary, <laughs> full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Thank <laughs> you.